Pooja, your book on Nathuram Godse is out on the stands now. My first question is going to be, what is it that made you take up this subject? The original idea was to write a profile, a journalistic piece of Godse. Uh, I was already uh, in the midst of uh, my archival research on RSS. In the process, I stumbled upon another statement of Godse, which has never come out and uh, uh, which is very important from several points of view. And because of this finding, I intensified my research and finally I decided to write it. But all that has been written about Godse so far is based on uh, Godse's statement in court. You will find that court completely rejected all the claims that Godse met in his court statement. And still, that statement has been treated as a reliable source of history. That is why the finding of another statement of Godse, the statement that he gave to his interrogators, and uh, you know the way archival records of the time, including papers seized from uh, uh, the RSS headquarters in Nagpur uh, corroborate the claims that Godse made in his interrogation statement makes that statement very important. Very important to understand not just the life history of Godse but also his relationship with the organizations he was associated with including RSS deep insight into Godse's life is also by proxy an insight into the life of Mahatma Gandhi. Yeah, to some extent, yes. Because the later phase of Gandhi, around the time when he launches civil disobedience movement, since then, his nationalistic politics uh, was a kind of generating all kind of reactions and one of them was the Hindutva politics, the Savarkarite politics, which was based on anxieties which were being created by Gandhi's politics during this entire period. So in a way, yes, it is also related to his life. Right. Uh, you have also um, dedicated one entire chapter on Savarkar and you know Savarkar and yeah. Gandhi exploring that relationship. Now again my question remains the same that it is it via the personality and the life and the ideology of Savarkar that you are actually making a larger point about Mahatma Gandhi? Without understanding the two together it would not be possible to understand the sinister part of history uh, which ultimately led to the assassination of Gandhi and part of it survived and continued even thereafter. <laughs> the author is not an objective narrator. There seems to be these outbursts of anger that come out of um, you know phrases like he uh, when you're talking about Savarkar that he, he got on his knees and uh, started writing mercy petitions. Would you say that you are a biased narrator? I won't really believe that I'm a biased narrator because, uh, well, if you're writing mercy pet petitions, you are on your knees. Had Gandhi written mercy petitions, I would have used same expression for him. The book seems to be at pains to tell the reader that this is a bogey that has been raised time and again that Godse was not part of the RSS when he killed Mahatma Gandhi. Is there an agenda which, which is informed by contemporary politics? There has been serious attempt to disassociate RSS from Gandhi's assassin. Because of this serious attempt, uh, you know, any attempt to put forth the facts that counter uh, this myth would look like agenda-driven to some people 
the book has actually delved quite a bit on the personality of Gandhi's assassin early in the book where um, you know you're, you're talking about how he did not like the fact that he was being uh, his real age was actually out in the open and uh, you know what what was actually behind that lie that rather useless kind of a lie that okay i'm not I'm in my 30s i'm only 25 years old so um, you have focused quite a lot on that now why would you want to do that i was just trying to understand the psychology of this man the psychology of godse so that psychology reflects at several uh, stages and the, it reflects even after he assassinates gandhi certain traits of godse continue throughout his life now without describing those traits he won't be able to describe the man that he was were you a little concerned that you might end up um, lionizing the person or humanizing godse when when a reporter writes about uh, say osama bin laden not as this international terrorist but as a husband as a son as a father right so when you are doing the same uh, thing with naturam godse uh, were you were you a little concerned that these details would take the focus away from what he did and bring and you attention to his personality his life see this book is not about the assassination of gandhi all right that is just part of it the book is about the life history of godse i have tried not to hide anything you know whatever is whatever fact uh, related to this man uh, i could lay my hands on i could dig out from the archives i have put it before uh, i put all those facts before the reader you know it is for the reader to judge how an assassin is made did you find yourself sympathizing with naturam godse at all in the process of researching his life what he did or what all other people who were guiding him were doing has now first they resulted in the assassination of the mahatma and secondly they survived and they have you know reached a stage where indian democracy is in danger how can i sympathize with him not even uh, not to the child i've tried to keep myself away from it what was the most difficult aspect of your research that uh, if at all and uh, you were not really sure whether you should include that in the book or whether you should let it go you know the two women that i have described in the book young women uh, manurma salvi and uh, shevanti uh, that that portion was really disturbing because uh, that portion i mean i could see how uh, their lives were also devastated by the gandhi's gandhi assassins uh uh they were used they were left shattered completely these silos that have been created when it comes to uh, uh, the figures of uh, india's uh, struggle for independence uh, gandhi subhash chandra bose or savarkar so people say that uh, okay they they deferred uh, um, uh, in their strategy in their ideology to achieve the same goal what do you have to say about that well of course God, the, the objective of gandhi and bose uh, was the same the two didn't agree after a point the two deferred and so both were trying to achieve that objective in their own ways Now, so far as Savarkar is concerned, Savarkar, of course, when he was in London, he was anti-British. But after he came out of jail, uh, he didn't participate in any uh, nationalist movement, nor did he start his own movement against British. Not a single movement. His anti-British position got completely transformed into anti-muslim action now by by doing so what he was doing is he was helping british implement 
uh, divide and rule policy. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.